16 hours and 10 minutes into the day of Wednesday, August 22nd, 2012, and it's time for the first segment of Big Bang Theory RL. That's right. Yeah, we're getting started. And we had some technical glitches yesterday, so yesterday's uh, uh, episode is not going to be as long as the 30 minutes that I had planned out to be uh, due to these technical glitches. Hopefully today's episode will be better. This is the goal. Bit by bit, day by day, we're going to get better. Uh, as you may have noticed, there is an error near the end, uh, well, at the end of uh, big, yesterday's Big Bang Theory RL. There is an error in it. And, uh, well, not yesterday's Big Bang Theory RL, I should say. Uh, the day before, the episode before, because the, uh, yesterday's Big Bang Theory RL is still in the editing bay being uploaded. So, yeah, we've got that work still left to do, and, um, so, yeah, we, I think I've corrected the error. I'm not sure if I've corrected the error. We'll see what happens today. Uh, if the error still exists, uh, it, it may be a shortened episode. I'm not too sure. Let's see how much, how much material I actually can put into today's uh, episode. So, uh, yeah, we'll see you in a bit. Yeah, it's uh, 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, and uh, still going. It's going to be another long night. Uh, it's I'm trying to get the editing properly in order to get it. I'm going to be spending a lot more time here at the editing desk. A lot more editing has to be done. So I'm trying to get the rhythm done uh, to a point where I can start uh, making it more efficient, and that way I can get more work done while cutting down the actual amount of time that I'm doing things. So, but that's going to take some doing, and as I said, some episodes are going to be uh, close to that 30, mark, uh, that 30 mark goal. Some will be under, some will be maybe, uh, hopefully I won't go over. Uh, but as I said, that 30 mark uh, reality show, the, thir the 30 minute mark reality show format is what we're going for. Uh, so that means that Big Bang Theory will be your view your reality show behind the scenes of a real life nerd like just like you see on Big Bang Theory and um, th w w what happens is the stuff I'm doing here this is the stuff that's typically montaged out of a uh, out of a video or of a movie or of a TV show in other words the, you know the part where they go through they speak through things very quickly and they usually have music in the background that's the montage uh, well this is the reality behind it. There's, there's a lot of <laughs> hours spent doing bits and pieces of uh, work. So, um, it isn't as glamorous as it may seem. Well, not really glamorous, but it's, time doesn't necessarily fly the way it does on the uh, shows. Although sometimes when you look back at it, when you look back at things, it certainly does. But, uh, from my perspective, it, 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 I'm here day in, day out. Uh, my going to church is on a, re on a regular basis is, is day in, day out. It's part of my normal routine. Uh, so, uh, you can make of it what, is, what you will. So, this is, it. This is the uh, Big Bang Theory uh, This is the reality show. It, I'm going to be now working on the 30-minute uh, format, trying to get there. I don't know if I'll be able to get it. I'm going to try to do doing, the, doing it every single day, but putting 30 minutes together every day in addition to doing the documentaries and all the other stuff is a rather complex challenge. But, hey, why not? Let's try it anyways. We'll see what happens. So that's it for this segment. This is the second segment. Um, we'll see what happens afterwards. Uh, I said I've got... Uh, this is going to take about an hour to render. 
So I've got an hour to kill. <laughs> I'll probably go on YouTube and see what I can find on YouTube. If there's anything to comment on and add that into the end. Of the, add that in. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what's there on YouTube. So all right. Uh, I'll see you in a bit. Alrighty, it's uh, just about 5.30 in the morning, and this is the start of the next segment. I just finished uh, watching uh, the last episode for Big Bang Theory RL, uh, I should say the August 21st episode. And uh, I've noted on there, people should know that uh, uh, slight changes, uh, we are going now for the reality show format. Uh, I was able to do uh, 21 minutes yesterday, so not too bad. I was I, uh, I was just about eight nine minutes short of the 30 minute mark. So good ballpark figure, you know, got there to the 20 minute mark. Not bad. The graphic overlays were good. Could be better. I've got to fix some of the things up that I did wrong in there. I still have some issues with the audio levels with the background music that has to be fixed up. Uh, but that, again, that has to be worked on. Uh, I said, this, this is going to be an evolution. So, once again, into the, uh, into, into, uh, another month, we're going for another evolution of the show. Uh, and you can see how, where we came from and how often we, re we evolve, we change, put new stuff into it, and basically, try to on a, on a bi-weekly or at least a monthly basis to get to improve the show to move forward in the best manner possible so that makes me happy that makes uh, you know uh, makes me feel that things are moving forward if anyone wants to know why I have a repository you watch it all the way to the end and you see that the last little clip that says uh, uh, right at the end there uh, it says, I am the library, uh, and then it, the clip jumps to, uh, I am the professor. Well, that's the kid's show I used to watch, Hilarious House of Frankenstein. Those are the two characters I used to pretend to be when I was a kid. So, what this does, is that this, this, uh, segment, the last ending, the ending segment there, is my identification. That's, that's about me. So every time you see the librarian, every time you, time you see the professor, that's me. That's who I want. That's who I was as a kid, and that's who I am now. So that explains that. And uh, yeah, right now is it? I have to start pushing it out to the social networks, and then after that, we'll see uh, if I do. Uh, if I get up in any comments for uh, for uh, the evening. The last segment on this, and I think I do have some, so I uh, I will come back. But I, I have one on PBS on, on Nova. The, the uh, there was a, there was a documentary Nova uh, on PBS. I was watching it earlier today. I do have some comments on that, and I will come back uh, in a few minutes and do that, along with maybe some YouTube comments. So we'll see what happens after that. All right, take it easy. Well, uh, there's really not much to comment on YouTube, but so I'll go back to uh, uh, the PBS documentary earlier. Uh, the series is called Nova, and this was uh, on what, it, what are our dreams. And it's uh, ironically, I, I had been talking about dreams in uh, earlier episodes of Big Bang Theory R RL, and. Uh, it seems to me that they're sort of missing uh, bits and pieces of this when they're doing the research. Uh, I, I, when you're doing research, you're not supposed to have any preconceived ideas. You're supposed to be open-minded and, and allow the evidence to tell you what's there. Uh, this does not seem to be happening in, in most research that's from what I've seen here. But from what I've seen is that they're trying to demonstrate that uh, that everything within the human, within the human body, within the human existence, is completely uh, me, mechanical. Mechanical. But there has been sufficient evidence over the years, if you 
for all the research. That this is not the case that the human beings have an experience in life that is beyond the standard animal, beyond the standard existence for other, uh, other beings on the planet. Although there are significant uh, similarities and areas of overlap, nonetheless our experience is unique. And this, for one, you know, no animal has evolved to the point, if you want to talk about evolution, has evolved to the point where they plan, they live in societies, the way we live in societies, uh, in terms of building towns, cities, houses, villages. Uh, I mean, if you go back in anthropology, and look at the villages, which can be found even uh, in archaeology, you can find old villages. You never see an animal village. Villages, and when you find a village in archaeology, even if it's a primitive village, in terms of what an anthropologist would consider it primitive, uh, it is still unique and distinct uh, from animals. In other words, you do not will you will not go back when you go into paleontology or if you go if you go back further into as you're studying art, you not you will not find an animal village. You will not find these structures. And this is as if being in many cases ignored by the researchers who are doing research into neurology, research into the study of the brain, and in this case uh, because uh, dreams are almost exclusively uh, limited to the brain, they study the brain. But the thing is dreams are not necessarily ex exclusive to the brain, and I can tell you how, how this is, is that while the body is asleep, and there is a chemical that puts the body to sleep and paralyzes it while you're asleep so you're not moving around. There are those who, when lacking this, this chemical, these are the people who sleepwalk, these are the people who talk in their sleeps uh, uh, and have a, a, a more animated sleep than uh, we normally would, that a, than a normal person would have, or let's say people with the, the paralyzing chemical. Uh, but the paralyzing chemical is not a is not complete. Uh, in other words, it does not completely paralyze the person to the point that the body is literally turned off. It simply dulls the senses to a certain degree that you don't move. It, it affects more of the, the motor cortex than anything else. But your auditory cortex, and that's the part of the the, the, the brain that hears. Uh, and, 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 and your temperature sensory cortex, your temperature sensory on, on the skin is still pretty active. So, so you could have something crawling on your skin or an itch on your skin, and that itch will actually transfer into your dream. And in many cases, it becomes an amplification of uh, in your dream the, that that itch, that that, that physical thing that is occurring on the body is amplified. The way I was able to sort of figure this out as, I, as, as I've stated before, I did, I've did. i done the dream research, I've done the sort of the sleep research, and I am one of these people, and that's how I got into it, who can remember their dreams. So I keep a dream journal. Ironically, this happened, uh, I began, it sort of began to connect things uh, when I was more than 10 years ago uh, when uh, I was at, at, at a, my first research facilities. And the first research facilities were very close to a railroad track. And every time the train would come by, even though I was able to fall asleep and, you know, sleep through the rumbling of the train come by, I would have these regular dreams uh, about trains, and it would be at just the time that when the train would come by. So, and I realized this is what happened here, and it, it realized that what was going on because 
when I can't hear the train, the train themes, even though I, I can sort of hear the train, I couldn't hear it as much, and the result was the number of train dreams I had decreased. So, as I watched that, that change, I realized that while I was sleeping, I was hearing and feeling the rumbling of the train come by. When I moved further away, and I really couldn't feel it that much, but I could still hear the, the, the train, uh, the dreams lessened. Uh, as for, they were talking about the meaning of dreams, and they sort of looked at a variety of different cultures that have a belief in uh, dreams, in terms of uh, the meanings of dreams. But that actually goes further into uh, a lot of the more New Age stuff, where you have people talking about the meaning of dreams in terms of, uh, uh, of predictions and so on and so forth. But it goes beyond that into actually uh, that there is a psychological meaning to dreams that many people have put together these, dreams, these dream books, uh, books about dreams and what this supposedly means as you dream about this, as you dream about that. And so the, the, while the, the PBS documentary tried to limit the, uh, the interest in dream understanding in terms of the, their meaning of the dreams, the symbolic meaning of the dreams, uh, they didn't really uh, do a good job because if you sat down and had, a degree, had a de any degree of research into this field, you would know that a variety of different areas, a variety, a variety including psychology, has uh, an interest in interpreting dreams. So that was kind of a bust in this in, in, in this talk, maybe, but not. But you know, this is what I was sort of uh, I'm sort of watching PBS and sort of seeing what's going on. And I realized that a lot of times these shows now have started to change. It was basically late 90s things started to change, and you started getting infotainment, and the actual amount of information is pulled back in term for the sake of entertainment. So that uh, I've watched some of the documentaries that are the old style documentaries, and still coming out of uh, out of England, and they're. Uh, I'm guessing they're not infotainment because in many cases they're rather boring. <laughs> Most people, they don't have that degree of excitement in there and, oh, well, what about this and uh, what about that and this. Uh, it, they're more matter of fact. Uh, they, go over, they go into uh, some of the information, some of the areas in more detail than you would find in your standard infotainment documentary. Uh, this is PBS, this is uh, Discovery Channel. Uh, all of these types of things, these types of channels uh, have sort of brought in the, the infotainment type of uh, standard. So this is kind of, this show, this documentary in Nova, which was kind of surprising because Nova used to be very good, uh, really put uh, Nova now into the category of infotainment because they didn't go into the details that are really needed in order to sort of say we're not that it's not infotainment but rather it's a full-on documentary because a lot you know you really do if, if it's a documentary you're doing a documentary you don't want to do a half-assed job you want to do something that's good and in many cases you want to push the boundaries on things you want to push your boundaries of knowledge. It's a documentary is and should be the video equivalent of a research paper. And if your work reflects uh, the style of an infotainment, then your research paper is basically fluff. And unfortunately this is something that can be said for this documentary here is that uh, while they did have some interesting points that you could go off and research on 
research later, the amount of depth in this uh, documentary really was significant and did not uh, really mean up with some of the other documentaries, the earlier documentaries, which weren't infotainment, uh, actually had in them. So the argument could be made that uh, PBS slowly but surely, even though uh, it's uh, uh, funded by Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, a large chunk of that content is not where it was uh, prior to the advent of infotainment. But as it, the, I think I, I, I might start doing one-for-one one documentaries uh, using PBS as a uh, sort of a, 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 a sounding board to get some information, get some ideas off of, and then start as they produce, start trying to produce documentaries that sort of answer or fill in these holes that are actually there. So I think that's where I'm going to be going next. I think that's where we're going to be starting to put some more of the stuff in there in, in, in this show. Well, I'm going to test up some of the materials, some of the some of the uh, the underlying information will come out here, and then uh, from there we'll move into full-blown documentaries as they they move from the Institute channels onto Physics TV. Anyway, it's uh, 7:30 in the morning, and I'm getting really tired, and I'm going to go to bed. So. I will see you next episode. Take it easy. Professor of what? Professor of physics. Free speech rules here at Democratic Earth.